President Joe Biden said the U.S. is already is ready to be a leader again in the fight against climate change, despite offering no new plans to step up his country's ambitions and continued discord at home over his proposal to spend hundreds of billions advancing clean energy. The Biden administration will demonstrate to the world the United States is not only back at the table, hopefully leading by the power of its example. High energy prices, he added, only underscore the need to diversify sources and adopt new clean energy technology. We're preparing to wrap up another busy day in Scotland. I think we got a lot done. We have a lot of good substantive meetings. And with my fellow leaders, and most of all, it was critically important for the United States to be here. At COP26, uh, back in the Paris Agreement, raising domestic climate ambitions and demonstrating a commitment to support the rest of the world, particularly those countries that are on the front lines of the climate crisis. Today, today I spoke with leaders of forested nations, island nations, developing countries. My message to them was the United States is going to be their partner as we meet this climate crisis. And I want to thank the United Kingdom and Prime Minister Johnson for hosting us, uh, hosting the world at a critical moment, as well as I met with Prince Charles, who's put together a very significant operation over the last uh, six, seven years of trying to bring in the private sector and to, to work on a number of these issues. Let's talk about the recent developments from COP26 and the health implications of climate change. Lecturer at School of Medicine, University of Central Lancashire, Dr. Jonathan Ajar, joins me from the news from Preston, Lancashire, via Zoom. Good to have you join us, Dr. Ajar. Oh, thank you very much for having me. So while efforts are on in, in Glasgow, Scotland, um, to limit the, the uh, greenhouse gas emissions and, and carbon and all of that, um, but we seem to be missing a point, which is the fact that, um, as we now understand, climate change is the single biggest threat to humanity today in terms of our health. It means that it is not just a disaster for lives and property, but it also does affect our health. Uh, talk to us about how all of these disruptions we're seeing to the weather um, have effects on, on, on our health. Okay, thank you. Uh, so it's been the interesting thing about climate changes. You can summarize it as just temperature rise. So what's happening is the speedy rise in temperatures it's never been seen before, and that's really due to human activity. So what that does to things that are related to health is, so I'll give you a good example. What it does is it affects the environment. So one of the problems is it, it affects the weather, and it brings problems to the air. So while I was doing this, I wanted to give you a context. So. If you look at the IQ air quality for Lagos, in two days' time, about 48 hours from today, Lagos is going to enter an unhealthy air quality. So what it means is people that are smart aids, older people, may not be safe in open places. So that's how serious this issue can be. Now, it also affects you know, the quality of water because it changes you know, the sea level, the quality of water, the uh, clean water that can be gotten, and that's related to diseases. Unfortunately, the low and middle income country like um, like ours, Nigeria, would suffer the most. So think of cholera, think of diarrhea diseases, think of all of the things diseases that kill on the five. Furthermore, it affects the ability to grow good food, and if you look at uh, low and middle income countries. Uh, there's problem with food security. So there's just not enough to eat. There's probably not, even when there's enough to eat, there's not good quality food. And so these are all of the problem. Climate change is known to, in the next 10 years, going to kill at least 250,000 people. So that's going to bring climate change as one of the top 10 global killers. Now, that's if you do not put the co into context that it contributes to the other nine um, nine other things. So, in summary, climate change is is, is an extremely important health um, disaster. And then, 
unfortunately, there's a disagree. The, the, the large proportion of mm. the effect is in low and middle income countries. Uh, like, absolutely, uh, and, like and where the and these are countries where um, the health sectors are also not fully developed. So it, it's a huge crisis for these countries. But for, if I understand what you said earlier, it seemed you were saying that look, um, in years to come, we are all going to be more susceptible to food. Um, air and water bond diseases. That's what I get from that. And that's the, one of the impacts of climate change on our health. But so is there anything that we can do from um, just a health perspective to uh, prevent yes. these millions of climate change related diseases? Yes, there's a lot that can be done. And so the, so the COP26 is the wider, um, so that's the conference of the parties uh, to the uh, Paris Agreement. So the, there's the COP26 um, health program, which has got six specific, um, um, you know, teams that states should follow. And you touched on something I thought is really important, um, you know, building resilient health systems. So uh, again, most of the healthcare systems in most of the countries that are most susceptible for some reason, are not resilient. I do not, I'm not convinced, and this is probably my opinion as, as a health expert, that a health system necessarily needs to be very advanced to be resilient. It just needs to function well. It needs to be accessible for, if you, because I've worked in Nigeria for a very long time, it needs to be accessible to the woman that sells Akara in Lagos, to the man that is a, you know, shoemaker, until you have people getting access at that level, the informal sector, then, then it's a systems issue. The other thing is we also need to create things that do not contribute to the climate change. Just about think of things, how the kind of fuel we use, that needs to be thought of. But people need to have alternatives. And then the third is priorities. What are we spending money on? Uh, if you if we if we are spending money on uh, from at a national level what is that what are we putting our money on and then for instance are the experts allowed to speak or what we have is politicians speaking on matters that are not political rather where you need to have experts talk about things just the way the science is being uh, mm -hmm. where the science is leading us so these are this is a summary of the COP26 um, health program uh, that if states adopt, it could, it could prevent this crisis uh, mm -hmm. from being extremely bad. And we'll continue to see how, um, what the COP26 resolutions will be in terms of this crisis. And we'll look forward to having more of this conversation with you as the, um, the, the summit proceeds. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, the Thank Lecturer School me. of Medicine, University of Central Lancashire, Dr. Jonathan Aja. Thank you for having me.